Let's talk about the GPS of selling. We all know what a GPS is. It takes you from destination to destination. Salespeople don't understand. They believe if they use all the techniques in whatever order, they will sell and they'll succeed, but it's not true. The GPS of selling, take into account you're starting in, in uh, LaGuardia Airport, you're flying to LAX. The plane goes off track over a thousand times, but still lands in LAX Airport. Okay? Well, as a salesperson, we're doing the same thing. We're going through our presentations and we're going off track. But if you don't follow the GPS of selling, you don't end up in LAX, you'll end up in Arizona, or worse, Cleveland. You know, and what you need to consider is that your objective is to get to that landing page, to get to LAX, or in this case, to get to that goal line. The GPS is five step process. In this case, we're gonna have the sixth step, which is our close. You have an attention step. The attention is gathering the trust of your prospect. It's no longer getting their excitement only, they need to trust you. Trust is essential in building relationships. So you have to develop the trust. With the interest, you might want to determine the interest and what's in it for them. So you might get somebody's attention by telling them, I've got a product for you that's exceptional and I'd like you to take a look at it. Well, the interest would be the, the, this product has saved people like yourself thousands of dollars. So not only are you getting their attention, but you're justifying with interest or validating it. What's in it for them? That's what it's all about. The benefits are not features. Too many salespeople get involved in selling the features. You find that in a lot of office products people who come in and say, I've got a great product for you. It does 50 pages a minute in copies, black and white. Color, it does 35. You need to identify this program will allow your people to be more efficient and more productive. It'll make more copies, sure, but it'll allow your people to stay at their desk. They can scan, they can fax, they'll be more productive. How much money is your, is your secretary costing you? How, many de how much time does she spend doing faxes every day? Well, we can reduce that. Does that make sense to you? So you turn it into a return on investment. You don't just turn it into features. Features don't sell, benefits sell. What's in it for me? The trial close of trial validation. I always like the trial close almost at the beginning because people don't expect it. And what they quickly do is tell you their major objection. We have something that we teach, and this is something that I want everybody to either write down or just remember, and you guys know it. It's how many times you speak to somebody and that person says to you, I'm not interested, or take me off your list, or don't call me again, or I'm tired of hearing from you and your people. How many times, we hear that a lot? All set. I'm all set, right? <laughs> So what you do, and what, what, what you've done is you really have an issue where the person has put you into a, uh, a non-trusting mode. Their, their defenses are up. Anybody remember what the, uh, the old rope dope was with Muhammad Ali years ago? It, Muhammad Ali fought George Foreman. George Foreman was a head and a half taller than he was, a lot stronger. And Ali couldn't beat him if he fought him straight on. So Ali, being a smart guy, decided what he was going to do was do something he called rope dope he was going to put himself against the corner, cover himself up, and make Foreman punch himself out. So he did that. He got into the fight. He went into the corner. And Foreman, this guy was huge, would be punching him and hitting him in this arm. And then he'd punch him again and he'd hit him in this arm. This would go on and on and on until the point of where Foreman ran out of gas and Ali beat him. So that's called rope dope Well, in sales, we have the defenses up of your prospect also. They don't want you to sell them. So they're like this, get away from me, don't sell me, don't call me, don't have anything to do with me. So our objective is to bring down those defenses. And we do that with empathy. We do that with empathy. We say, I can appreciate why you feel that way, but I'm not looking to sell you anything. All I'm looking to do is give you intelligent information so you can make an intelligent business decision. And what that does is that brings down their guard. The other way we do it, which I call the Columbo, anybody remember what Columbo was? Colombo was a detective. You don't remember Colombo, huh? No. A little young for that. Mm -hmm. Colombo was a detective, and what he used to do is always find out who the criminal was. And what he would do is he'd walk out off stage, and before he, he said, "Before I leave, I just want to ask one more question." And he'd turn back, and he'd attack with the question the criminal. The criminal thought that he got away with it because Colombo was leaving. So you got this person on the phone. Well, you got this person in front of you, and they think you're trying to sell. And they say, look, I really don't want to deal with this anymore. Take it easy. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Don't call me anymore, whatever it might be. And you turn around to them and say, I want to take you off my list. I don't want to call you anymore. The guy's defenses come down. They think you're gone. 
And then you say, but before I leave, why won't you take advantage of this opportunity? What happens at that point is they usually turn around and tell you the real reason why they don't want to do business with you. I got burnt. The last person who did the work for me didn't give me the value I was looking for. I didn't get the quality I needed. I'm tired of hearing people like you four times a day, five times a day, once a month, whatever it might be. And what you're finding is they are finally telling you the reason why they don't want to do business with you and giving you the answer to how you can do business with them because they bring you back in. And you've gotten, and then realize they brought you back in. You're using the Colombo. Let me take you off my list. Let me not call you anymore. But before I go, let me just ask you one question. They're willing to answer that question for you. Because you're no threat anymore. You're gone. They just don't realize that they're just bringing you right back into the presentation. And that's what you say. You're saying, why won't you take advantage of this opportunity? Well, because the last one who sold it to me, sold it to me and took money from me, and I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't get the value. So what you're telling me is that, you, you really have a need for the product, but you're concerned about somebody not delivering the integrity and the value that you're looking for. Is that correct, Mr. Customer? That's correct, and I can appreciate why you feel that way. There's the empathy part of it. I understand why you feel that way. But I'm not looking to sell you anything. All I'm looking to do is give you enough information so you can make an intelligent buying decision. It might not be with me. It might be with somebody else. But it's my job to be able to give you that information before I leave. And what they have now is we've created a different relationship on the sales process. You're not selling them anymore. You're partnering with them on the solution. And they don't realize it. But they've created that. Their guard is down. Their defenses are down. And you're selling them that based on the value that they're telling you they need because of the last occurrence that hurt them. So this is important because we always hit that obstacle of, I don't want to do business with you. How many times you hear that salesperson, and I love this, when the salesperson, you, you call up and you speak to somebody or you talk to them and, and, and you say to them, uh, you know, this is so-and-so and I'm calling, and, and they say, well, I'm, I don't want to do business with you. You say, I didn't tell you anything yet. The salesman comes off and says, well, don't you want to save money? You ever hear that before? Oh. <laughs> and I like the responses on the other side. No, I'm glad you called. I want to pay twice as much. <laughs> How you embarrass people by using these kind of sayings, right? Don't you want to save money? No, forget it. I'm, I, you know, and this is what we do as salespeople. We say the wrong things. It disrespects the intelligence of the person on the other side, first of all. And it doesn't really define what you're trying to do, which is build an integrity type of relationship. I don't want to sell you anything. I know you might have a need for my products, you might not. If you don't, maybe somebody else does. I just want to give you enough intelligent information so you can make an intelligent business decision. And isn't that what you want to do, Mr. Customer? And isn't that what you want to do with anybody, any, any customer you have, they only want to make a smart decision, okay? Once you qualify that they're in the market for what you have to offer them, then the next thing is they want to make a very intelligent choice. So give them intelligent reasons to make an intelligent choice. Of course, make it yours, but you need to first bring their defenses down. Don't fight the defenses, remove them. OK, so that's, that's important tricks. Uh, in the benefits, we understand. The trial clubs, we understand. Objections. When you're doing an objection, it's very important that you validate the objection as you ask the question. Too many times we, we handle an objection, and we just move on, and then we say, can we get started? And then they come back and say, no, I have this kind of problem or this kind of concern. And you said to yourself, but didn't we just discuss that? Didn't we just go over that? Unless you validate or nail down the objection, it will come back. If you validate each one as you're delivering the message, you won't have the objection. And you validate by saying things like, does that make sense to you when you're doing your presentation? Does that make sense to you? Is this what you want? Is this how you want to move forward? And what this does is allow the person to identify what you've uh, told them and say, yes, it makes sense. They're not closing with you, but they're not going to open up this as an objection going forward. It could take up to five objections for you to sell somebody. That's what statistics show, that people sometimes say no five times before they say yes. So you have to persevere in this presentation. You have to be able to a answer five objections and respond to them, have rebuttals. But every time you have a rebuttal, you say, does that make sense to you? Yes. Well, is there any other concern you have? No. Well, let's get started. Well, I've got another concern. 
Okay, so what you're telling me is, if we satisfy this concern, we can move forward. Yes. Okay, satisfied. You isolate the objection. You guys all heard this before. You isolate the objection. You handle the objection, but you validate it. Does that make sense? Is this what you want? Fine. Let's get started. Go back to the close. If you keep validating, you remove all the objections, and they will only say yes. But if you don't validate it, they keep coming back in the same circuit. Because you said, I, we, we discussed that. We're not going to say that to them, but we discussed that already. And they're going to be telling they didn't validate it, so it's not nailed down in their heads that they understand what you're, what you're saying. So you want to be able to isolate an objection, and you want to be able to respond to the objection, and then validate the objection. Does that make sense to you? Fantastic. Can we move forward now? And then you come up with another objection. Isolate it again. So what you're telling me is if we satisfy this need, we can move forward. Whoa, hold on a second. I've got to talk to my wife. I love that one. You know, that's an objection. That's an objection. You know, fantastic. You know, you want to talk to your wife. Well, the problem is you didn't really negotiate or you didn't qualify correctly because if you knew your wife had made a decision, you would have had them both in the room to make the decision. You have to have both people in a room when you, when you get a close, right? Yeah. Does one won't make it, they'll, they'll say, well, my wife, especially the wife. Well, the husband always says, well, my wife's going to take care of it. It's her decision. And then when she's talking about it, my husband has to pay, write the check, so I need him here, too. Right. It's really a stall. You know, and what you need to do is identify it and isolate it. So what you're telling me, if I speak to your husband and he agrees on this, we can move forward? Fantastic. Can we get him on the phone? You know. And that's what you want to do. You want to promote the close, and you want to eliminate all the choices that she's trying to do to, to either intentionally or unintentionally dissuade you from closing the deal. Sometimes you have to be objective, too, because you're almost putting the person up against the wall to say, let's get your husband on the phone. And it's almost as if you're pushing a little too hard. Well, if, she's really, if she really wants what you're offering, it won't be an obstacle. Right. So you really get the trial close it by asking that right away, by saying, you know, if, if it's really your husband that you're concerned about and the questions he has, I'd love to be able to help him. Can we get him on the phone and let me assist him? So it's the way you deliver the message. But the message is basically, she'll say, oh, no, he's too busy. He's too busy. Right away, you know, there's more than an issue of a husband making a decision. Ooh. She's not sold yet. She's an issue. You, you won't know where you're at in the sales process. No, that's a trial close. Yeah. You trial close by asking for that because you're turning around to and, and saying, well, besides your husband, is there anything else I need to cover? Because right away you realize that it's being used as an excuse. And, and now you want to deter determine what's stopping her other than that from making a positive decision. You have to handle that more. So you use it as a trial close. You know, and you do it in a nice way. You, you never do things as, as hard and pushy. You're only trying to be responsive to her needs. Listen to that. When someone says, okay, so what's the next step? You're going to get back to me? And I say, yes, I'll get back to you with a proposal, such and such. You don't really have a close until you make a proposal. No. What you want to do is when they say get back to you, you say, well, before I do that, let me ask you a question. Does everything I showed you make sense to you? Well, Bring it back. Validate it once more. You know, and if this makes sense to you, what stops us from moving forward right now? bring it down to the close. At that point, she's going to say, nothing stops us from moving forward and you have a close. Or she's going to say, well, I really need to do X, in which case it's an objection. And you're going to go into that process I just told you and you're going to say, so what you're telling me is if I'm able to satisfy this need for you, we can move forward? I was just more of a, of a contract, not to take the time away, I was just more of a contract, Jenny. So it's, it's, you still have to propose a contract before you can actually get a close. Well, all you could say is, we may have an agreement, it becomes a verbal agreement, and what I'm going to do is I'll have the contract drawn up and I'll have it to you first thing in the morning. Okay. You know, so, so it's, you see, see don't, don't mistake your business or your business or your business or your business from all of our business because it's all the same. It's just the way you deliver the message. You know, it's, you're, you're delivering it from, from an artistic level of saying, I'm designing for you, but the bottom line is you're providing a service, and that service has a fee. And those people aren't going to buy your service unless you give them reason and value to buy your service. So it's the same thing, Vincenzo. So you're basically delivering the same information to them to make the same decisions and taking the same skill sets to get them there. You know, asking for the order, trial closes, what's going to stop us from moving forward, what do I need to do to get your, 
confidence. These are all things that everybody in this room is going to use. Excuse me, does someone like Vincenzo validate again once he presents the contract or presents the offer? Is everything that we discuss covered in the contract? Or is it does he, does he reevaluate? I think, or I think does we all just I, present. I, and no, I think we all do. When you bring that contract back, I think you say because we're all credible and we all have the integrity. We sit down. Let me review the contract, our discussions in the contract with you, and you sit down and you go over the contract every line by line with them. You want them comfortable, sure. and so you it's don't. Best to take this contract hand in hand as opposed to sending it via email. Oh, or absolutely. Yeah. You know, especially when you're dealing with big ticket items. Yeah. You, you know, you, you you bring it down. You know, and you sit down and you say, I need an hour to go over this because I want to make sure you're comfortable. You know, absolutely. You know, if if you're selling something that's inexpensive, well, then you could send it by by email or by or, or by uh, you know Federal Express, and that's what you need to do. Also, if you had a contract, you know, to do Federal Express or do UPS overnight today is very cheap, but it really has a big impression on people. So if you have a contract that's worth something, invest the money. Don't send it by email. Invest the money and put it in a Federal Express envelope. It'll get through the gatekeeper. It'll end up on your decision maker's desk. And then call them up. Did you receive my Federal Express? It's very impressive. And that's what we're trying to sell. We're trying to sell that kind of aura about what we're trying to deliver, the quality of what we deliver. Don't shortchange. It's not a lot of money. And again, it's, you, know, you want to identify the right prospect. You're not sending it a piece of literature, a piece of collateral to everybody in a Federal Express envelope. But you are sending your proposals. They need to be put together clear, cleanly, professionally, and have them be received with class. And you will get a lot more business that way. People will respect you more.